The Holy Gospel according to Matthew, the 21st chapter. When they had come near Jerusalem and had reached Bethphage at the Mount of Olives, Jesus sent two disciples, saying to them, Go into the village ahead of you, and immediately you will find a donkey tied and a colt with her. Untie them and bring them to me. If anyone says anything to you, just say this, The Lord needs them, and he will send them immediately. This took place to fulfill what had been spoken through the prophet, saying, Tell the daughter of Zion, look, your king is coming to you, humble, and mounted on a donkey, and on a colt, the foal of a donkey. The disciples went and did as Jesus had directed them, and they brought the donkey and the colt and put their cloaks on them, and he sat on them. A very large crowd spread their cloaks on the road, and others cut branches from the trees and spread them on the road. The crowds that went ahead of him and that followed were shouting, Hosanna to the son of David. Blessed is the one who comes in the name of the Lord. Hosanna in the highest heaven. When he entered Jerusalem, the whole city was in turmoil asking, who is this? The crowds were saying, this is the prophet Jesus from Nazareth in Galilee. The gospel of the Lord. Every service, I've had this incredible urge to ask you to stand, but you've already heard the gospel, so don't need to stand today. Please pray with me. O Lord, may the words of my mouth and the meditation of each heart be acceptable in your sight. Lord, you who are our strength and our redeemer. Amen. What a celebratory Sunday, isn't it? We often forget that uh, Palm Sunday can be a very celebratory Sunday. In fact, I often get asked the question, what's the difference between Passion and Palm Sunday? Because in our, in our liturgy, our liturgical cycle, our church year, we are given the option to celebrate either one each year. In more recent times, it's become um, more of the practice to celebrate Passion Sunday. And I'll be honest with you, the reason that was given to me for that instead of Palm Sunday was because not a lot of people can come to church during the week anymore on Thursdays and Fridays, and we wanted to make sure that people had the whole gospel story and the whole passion before they came on Easter Sunday. So they decided to maybe make a Sunday where we could celebrate the passion as well. However, here at Abiding Presence, we chose to do Palm Sunday, and we usually do that. Actually, Palm Sunday is a pretty big celebration throughout the world. I did not know this. Um, But there's all sorts of traditions, just as with our Easter traditions, there's all sorts of traditions all around the world around Palm Sunday. Um, One of my favorites is that in Israel, Jordan, Lebanon, Palestine, and Syria, it's actually perhaps the best attended liturgy in the Christian calendar. And it's a notable family occasion. Children attend with branches from olive and palm trees, and there are carefully woven crosses, which we also have palm tree cross, palm branch crosses that you can get on your way out of church today. And they make other symbols out of palm fronds and roses and a procession at the beginning of the liturgy, and they have holy water splashed on them, and it's a big deal. There are several countries that do something um, very special on these days. Some actually start celebrating Easter a little early before they go into Holy Week. So there's a lot of celebration around Palm Sunday. What I think is interesting about Palm Sunday is that when we choose the reading of the gospel to be the the story of triumphant entry, then the Old Testament and the New Testament passages are ones that typically would go with the passion story or make more sense with that. Whereas if we were to read the gospel of the passion story today, the Old Testament readings would actually go along with Palm Sunday. I don't know. I guess it's so that we can have a little of both on each, either way we celebrate. So why Passion Sunday or Palm Sunday? It is our choice, but we just today felt like a parade would be an awesome way to start the day, and we do that with Palm Sunday. And how long have parades been going on? Pastor Steve kind of mentioned last week that parades have actually been going on for thousands of years. Some of the earliest parades um, are uh, depicted in cave paintings in ancient places where uh, 3,000 years before Jesus even walked the earth, hunters would come back parading whatever they, uh, whatever they killed for the uh, community to eat. And people would gather and they would parade it in and celebrate their victory and their, um, and their food that was coming in. 
There have also been numerous religious and military parades throughout the years, and that's actually where parades really became the most, uh, the most prevalent, was for religious celebrations or festivals, or um, for military inspection, or welcoming home, or sending off. Um, in fact, I was very confused when I went to A&M, and they had this big, huge open area that I thought was kind of like a soccer field, and heard that it was the parade ground, and I didn't understand, because the parade I'd been to was six miles long down the street. So then I figured out, oh, it's, a, it's where the military goes, and they're inspected. So parades have been going on for a number of years, and we have celebrated them in a number of ways, some for holidays, some for special significance. Some of our parades, like Mardi Gras and Fiesta, started with military or religious backgrounds, but now they've just become festive, haven't they? So parades are a big part of our celebration and tradition as human beings. Now on Palm Sunday, why palms? Why not olive branches or other kinds of things? Well, first of all, palms are very big, and so they seem more powerful and more prestigious, so to speak. And back in the ancient times, palms were actually given um, a lot of meaning and a lot of significance. So they would take the palms and they would um, include them in their artwork. If, for instance, King Solomon in ancient times had uh, palm trees carved out of the stone around the doors in the temple. Um, Deborah, one of the early Israelite judges, would sit under a palm tree and make her judgments and help keep the peace in Israel. Um, these beautiful branches were prevalent in that area of the world, and they were considered very majestic and very victorious. So that's why we use palms. Why do, what does Hosanna mean? Well, Hosanna, as we learned last week, means uh, savior or save us or save now. So when the people actually yell Hosanna, what we're yelling is savior or save us, which I think is very significant on this Palm Sunday as we enter into Holy Week and God prepares the way for our salvation. Yet we don't really understand what that means, do we? Why a donkey or a colt? Well, a number of reasons. Zechariah, in chapter 9, if you want to look it up, it's on page 773 in your pew Bible, but in Zechariah chapter 9, verses 9 through 12, he predicts or prophesies that the Savior is going to come, the Messiah, riding a colt and a donkey. And so Matthew, of course, makes sure to note that this is what was used in this parade to symbolize that, yes, of course, this is the Messiah, this is the Savior fulfilling prophecy. And also a colt or donkey would have been less prominent. It would have been humble. So there's this interesting kind of tension between the palms and the victory cries and the excitement of the people and then Jesus, the humbleness coming in on a donkey instead of something that would be more suited for a warrior or a king. And this was a significant time in the time of the people as well. So there was a festival that was celebrated, um, and they used palms, so it was probably around the time that they would have had the palms anyways, but the Roman citizens very likely would have been having some kind of festival or parade of their own. When I looked up Roman celebrations um, during that time, there was like 13 or 14 different celebrations in the month of March, and then about the same number in April. It seems like they were kind of the partying crowd, so there are often celebrations going on, and they would have included parades and festivities. So it's very likely, as someone noted in our pastor Coffee with the Pastor this week, that while this parade was going on of Jesus and the palms, there is very likely a more pagan parade or Roman parade going on on the other side of town. And they probably would have used more symbolic of majestic and leadership and conquering kinds of symbols. <clears throat> I think it's important to know the context and the culture in which this happened. And I think it's also important to think about 
what the people were then expecting in that culture and context. What were people expecting when Jesus came in and we had this whole procession? And I kind of get a little bit of a chuckle, but, you know, it's just like us too these days. Before we know, we don't know what we don't know. And so in hindsight, we can celebrate that this was not quite a victorious parade, even though it was. But at that time, they were expecting Jesus to come in and conquer the Romans and have victory, just like they did in Egypt. When God sent Moses to live, deliver the people from slavery, they were expecting Jesus to win this big, huge war against the Romans and bring them out of their oppression by, this, uh, by the Romans. I keep wondering, though, why we kept, keep expecting things like that when God continues to bring unexpected things our way and do things a little bit differently, and there's prophesi prophecies about what's actually going to happen. These prophecies keep coming true, and yet we, the people kept expecting something different. So these are the facts about Palm Sunday. The facts. But now I want to talk just for a moment about the theological significance for the day, the significance for us in our life of faith. Jesus knows that this is the time of life when his life is going to end. Jesus knows that when he returns to Jerusalem, he's going to be arrested and killed. So Jesus knows, and he's been sharing with the disciples kind of a secret coded language, parable-ish kind of, kind of tune, uh, the way that this is about to happen. He gives hints all over the gospel. So as Jesus enters Jerusalem, willingly and faithfully and fulfilling God's prophecy and promise, Jesus knows that he's going to die. We have a God who willingly and knowingly went to die for us so that our own deaths could be conquered and we would be forgiven and reconciled to God. Back a few weeks ago on Ash Wednesday, we remembered that because of Adam and Eve's sin, that we are dust and to dust we shall return, meaning we are, we have mortal bodies and these mortal bodies will die and return to the earth. But now... Because Jesus was willing to march in Jerusalem and was willing to die for us, we are once and for all reconciled to God. So today is a celebratory day, one for parades and palms and triumphant cries. And yet this week ahead is a challenging one and a sad one. It's Holy Week. But it is just that as well. Holy Week is the week that had to happen in order to make us whole. So today we praise God for a triumphant entry. Hosanna has come. Our Savior has come. And this week we await our wholeness in love and grace. Amen.